Hello friends, I'm going to talk on giving forgiveness. Boxone diop. Boxone thaka o tika. Tine maka itle white kela astana ame boxone diop. Itle moche nao pedir kela astana. Itle maka luxon kela astana. Thaka boxone diop, tika boxone diop. They don't deserve it. But you deserve love. You deserve freedom. Forgiveness is not about somebody else. Forgiveness is about you. Jedna tu tuji duk. Boxone din astra rauta tetna. You are the one who is carrying that pain. You are carrying that hurt. And you are the one who is carrying that poison. And you are the one who is affected by it. The paradox of um, Forgiveness is you give it to others, but you are the ones who is set free. Dr. Earl was saying it is a primary experience. Forgiveness is a primary experience of a happy, creative personality. The more you forgive, the more happier you become. And therefore, it is a motive in all the religions. Most of the religions have this forgiveness as an aspect, a dimension of they are alive because forgiveness is very important. Jesus himself said, forgive not only once or even seven times, 70 times seven. Jitlo tu boxone dita, titlo tu tuka surka dita. You become more and more free. And therefore, forgiveness is important for us. Forgiveness is not of the ordinary. As Gandhi was saying, it's not for the weak. It's a virtue of the strong. Only those people who have act of love or highest dimension of love can forgive. Those who are into a spiritual life full of grace, only they can forgive. Otherwise, we have this revenge, anger, captainness. So what is forgiveness? I would talk about it in, from the psychological dimension. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is willful denouncement of the punishment is, that is due to other person. Rag, tirok, anikrod, mocha jivitan, taka diutsu asa, kitak tane itle maka kelle, but now I willfully denounce it, I don't give it to it. Or it can be defined as replacing bitterness, anger, revenge, vengeance with benevolence, goodness and love and prayers. So you are making a decision. Therefore it is not a feeling, it is a willful act, a decision you make so that other person is freed and you are also freed. They say that when you set somebody free, you are setting a prisoner free as Dr. Miller would say and you realize that prisoner was you. You were keeping yourself as a prisoner of the hurts of all that other person has done for you. But when you give uh, forgiveness to other person, you are the one who is experiencing release. So when I don't give forgiveness, I am digging a grave for the other person, hardly realizing that I am digging also another grave for myself. More anger I keep, more hurt I keep, and keep it for long years, the damage is for me. And therefore, it's always good that we forgive. But what could be the reason we don't like to forgive? Father, because there are certain factors that hold me from giving uh, forgiveness. It is human to err. But it's divine to forgive. And in order to forgive, you need God's grace. And you have to move a level higher in order to forgive. If you remain at the same level, it is tit for tat, tooth for a tooth. But when you decide to forgive, you move a little higher to a divine level to forgive. And then it is an act of love. And so why we don't forgive? Because we have this anger with us. And that anger gives us power. 
ताने मका ओशें केलां चलेर आउ ताचे लागी उलो इनास्तन राउ तोलो आउ ताका ओशें कुत तोलो I would do something in revenge and in vengeance towards him and I get empowered and therefore I keep this or I feel if I forgive that person I may not get justice it is not right because he has taken something of mine he has done something so badly for me and if I forgive then he goes scot free I don't want to do that. Or some people are afraid that if I do forgive him and if I keep forgiving, he may repeat the same act again. And therefore, it's not good to forgive. Or forgiveness may be difficult when the hurt is too raw. Just now it has happened and I can't instantly forgive. Or I don't forgive because of my ego. If I do I don't forgive. And therefore, because of this ego, I don't forgive the other person. Another factor that I don't forgive the other person is, I like this victim status of mine. Somebody has done this to me and I am a victim, everybody does it to me. And I feel pity for myself and I want others also to feel pity. And therefore I go and tell others, see he has done this to me. And if I forgive that person, I cannot any longer hold the status of a victim. And therefore I don't forgive. But as I said, the freedom is for you. And you are the one who is getting freed. What happens is when we have this unforgiveness, I keep this unforgiveness with me. It is I who is hurting myself inside. As I was saying, it's like a charcoal I hold in my hand when I don't forgive. And this is burning for me inside. It is does a lot of damage for me inside. In fact, I am handcuffed to the other person. Other person whom I have not forgiven, I carry that person. I, I, I take this everywhere. Though that person is not with me physically, but he is there with me psychologically. I carry him in my memories. I carry him in my body, in my pain, in my anger. And so I am getting handcuffed to that other person. When I am not giving freedom, I am uh, forgiveness, I in a way tie myself to the past. Well, incident I am now 50 years and still I carry it. So I link myself to the past and I make myself captive. I am not free because past is disturbing me. In fact, if you are unforgiving, your efficiency, personal efficiency is affected. The more unforgiving you are, less efficient you would become. Personal efficiency uh, deteriorates if you don't forgive. Also, they say many illnesses are related to this unforgiveness. When you are not forgiving, you have a tendency to have a high blood pressure. There would be also anxiety and higher occurrence of depression because something is not sorted out and it remains with you. You can get into depression. Also, tendency to recover from any sickness. Prognosis to come back from to healthy life also becomes difficult because you are blocking somewhere. Also, if you are mourning, the mourning does not take well because you have not forgiven enough. Your prayer life gets affected. Your relationships get affected. In fact, your love is reducing in you. More and more unforgiving you are, less and less loving you become. And more and less and less you experience love. You le less and less you become creative. And therefore, unforgiveness affects us, disturbs us, and it makes us inefficient. And therefore, it is good to forgive instantly. The more you forgive, better is for you. And so, when we forgive, we have a lot of benefits. The more you forgive, better relational person you are. They say the level of your personal happiness, your personal well-being is higher when you forgive. When you forgive, you are more healthy, more efficient, you take interest in, in, in things. Your self-esteem as a person grows higher because forgiveness is a virtue of the strong. You move higher. You don't get into this um, struggle. Also, you, there is a spiritual growth that is happening with you. Generally, there is greater health. 
with those people who forgive. And so forgiveness is something that is we need to cultivate. The more we cultivate it, the more we make a decision towards it, it's the thing that would make us better persons, efficient persons. And we have to realize that this is a choice we need to make each day. Instead of carrying the baggage, negative baggage with us, negative with, with us, we have to let it go. Stephen Hayes compares this unforgiveness is to something like hooks, big hooks, you put it on your back. The hooks are put on the back and the person whom you have not forgiven, you put it on it. Each person is put on your back and you move around with those persons whom you have not forgiven. The more persons you have not forgiven, the more heavier you would become. Longer you keep, more sick you would become. And so forgiveness would be just lifting that person out. Let that person go and making yourself lighter, freer. So let us make this a way of life of forgiving, a part of our religion, a spiritual exercise that we let go. Don't take things personally, but let that person go from me. Let that person no longer give me pain. And it's all rag, and it's a tea duke, much a carzana, and do rout and salar, and put to put to thoughts duke, much a matta. I am hurting myself. Not that person any longer hurts me, but I hurt myself by remembering it, bringing it to my mind, and bringing it to my heart. I hurt myself again and again, over again and again. I simply put myself in pain. And they could we have to forgive. And at certain crucial time, it is pertinent that we forgive. When? We may carry it for some time, but at certain times, we need to forgive. Suppose your life has become such that suddenly you have these angry outbursts on your children, on people around you. Suddenly, tu ragar zata. Kaij karan nasna ragar zata. O rag kuincho. This rag is not. This anger is not directly related to this person or that person. This anger is stored up anger, stored up hurt, which is emitted to somebody else. You give it out to somebody else. You have this angry burst which you cannot really ex express and they go out of proportion. Or another time, if your life becomes very difficult, relation wise when are you are relating with somebody you always think the bad side of that person you always think that person may do something harm for you you always is suspicious of that person means your past hurt are continuously hurting you and affecting your relationships also it's a time high time for you to forgive when you become little addictive towards food or drink in order that you cannot punish the other person who has done harm to you, you are hurting yourself by overeating, over drinking or getting addictive. Also, you have certain times, this person is always on your mind whom he has not forgiven. You get up, first thing you think of this man. When you sleep, first thing you think of this person who has hurt you. That person is constantly there with you. You take this person to your bed, you take this person to your room, you take this person everywhere you go. Means the memories of this person are with you. Probably that's the time. It is high time that you need to forgive. Then, therefore, let us make a pattern of our life to forgive. Let us look at some of the things Jesus himself said on forgiveness. There are numerous texts in the Bible where Jesus constantly talks about forgiveness. Matthew chapter 18, the whole chapter talks about how forgiveness is important. And there he tells Peter that you need to forgive not only once, not only twice, but 70 times 7. Jesus also said, unless you forgive, your heavenly father will not forgive you. Or even when he taught that prayer to his disciples, he said, as we forgive our sins, forgive us our sins. So it is a condition for you to forgive in order to receive forgiveness from others. Or at the cross, 
we have where Jesus was struggling in excruciating pain. But at that time he said, forgive them, forgive them. His burden, his pain was lighter when he forgave. So more we forgive, it's easier for us to forgive. Now, this is very important step in forgiveness, is how do we forgive? How can we forgive? And so certain things, certain attitudes, certain paradigms and perspectives need to be changed in order to forgive. First of all, don't take this insult, this injury done by the other person personally. Don't think that is pointed at you. The more and more you think he has done it to me, then maka skela, maka dukoila, tomozo zaon maka kela. If you take it as pointed to you, then the pain becomes more. Make it situational, make it circumstantial. Meaning, ye akala gonzala stele. Ami gorabena sao. And because we live together, he must have done it to me this way. Or any house, when there are two brothers, they fight for the, for the wealth, the properties, and one brother will take more, another brother would take, had to take less, or one would do, do injustice to other person. This is common thing that is happening, or that is situational thing. Or the, the person is the superior, or the person is the headmaster, or the director, and probably that's why he is doing this because so much of responsibility is there. The situation has made him to do, not that person. Or you look at probably his upbringing has done this to, uh, to him. Probably he, he was made up like that. Therefore, he has this way of dealing with people. And that's how he probably has hurt me. So make it from personal to circumstantial. Second way of lightening it up is make it more common. That usually happens. It happens everywhere. Like I have a tendency to hurt others. He also has a tendency to hurt others. It happens when we human beings live together. There's a tendency to ha uh, happen. It is tendencies. It's a patterns of life. It's a common thing that happens. If you look at it that way, then it becomes easier to forgive. Also, give a benefit of doubt to the other person. Why probably he has done it? Maybe this way or that way. Or his, he is a person who thinks this way maybe. That he has directly to hurt me? No. But you give a benefit of doubt to the other person. And lastly, in order to forgive, you make yourself as a hero of the story. You make yourself as at the source. You make yourself as someone who is doing it. Not as a victim. Like in the story of prodigal son in Luke 15, the father is the hero who gives forgiveness. As soon as he sees the son, he runs towards him. He hugs him. He gives kisses to him. He puts a new rope on him. He puts a ring on him, meaning he is the hero. And he gives it even without asking. Forgiveness is without even asking, he's giving it to him. And he is the hero of the story. When this injury happens, I make myself more and more victim then the hurt becomes more and more for me to bear. And therefore, I have to say I will become the hero. Though the pain is more, I would become the hero and I would emerge as someone doing something to that person. I would be the one who would move forward and then I would feel good about myself. I would start getting positive feeling. There is a certain um, model of forgiveness psychologically given by Everett uh, Worthington. Uh, he has a pattern which he says, reach, R-E-A-C-H. Recall, have empathy, promote empathy towards the other person. Then altruistically uh, give forgiveness. Then commit to that particular forgiveness and then hold on to that forgiveness. Recall would be, you have to recall what is happening happened to you. Suppose that person has hurt you physically, you have to remember what exactly happened. Recall what he has done, what he has made you do, feel also. And at this time, even you can write to that person what that person has done to you at the recall level. Just know and bring to your mind and your heart whatever has happened. 
then promote empathy towards the person promoting empathy would be like you try to understand per that person from his point of view get into the shoes of that person maybe that person is always a angry type or that person may be greedy type or that person must have been brought up by parents who were not loving or that person must have been a person who was pressed on his situations must have been so bad or something you try to understand that person that person may be a spinster or that person may be a dominating type try to understand that person more and more promote that empathy it becomes easier to forgive thirdly and very important uh, step is altruistically willingly as a will as a decision you say i make a choice to forgive this person this person was deserving my vengeance this person was deserving my punishment this person was deserving my anger but now i make a decision not to give it to him or her i withdraw it i withhold it i instead would give love to that person i instead would give my prayers well wishes for that person and i make this choice and then i make a commitment to that i i strongly will continuously forgive that person try the ways i could forgive that person and then i hold on because once forgiving does not happen second time if you forgive doesn't happen you have to constantly forgive till that pain is gone from you now when do you understand that you have forgiven when you have forgiven you will realize that when you remember that incident you have no longer that ill feeling around your heart you don't feel aversion towards that person you feel even you can go and talk to that person that anger has gone those ill feelings don't come that uh, uh, anger doesn't come and you feel normal about yourself so whenever you have felt that you have given real forgiveness that's the time you uh, you feel great about yourself there are ways where we have uh, we have forgiven some people say i will forgive the other person only conditionally if that person does this i will forgive or some people say i will do it as a social requirement we are husband and wife i have we have to be nice to each other so i will forgive or we are father and children we have to forgive each other father has to forgive his children children has to forgive so it's a social requirement therefore i will do or i do it because it's expected of me so there are different levels of forgiveness but the highest level of forgiveness is as an act of love you do it out of love and you do it with the grace of god and when you do this you feel real freedom within you you feel that you have gained a, a victory over yourself you are no longer a captive you are no longer a prisoner and so this is the way probably we need to go about this you begin with a prayer you say lord i choose to forgive this person lord i choose to forgive this person you name that person for what he has done at this time remember what he has done for you and how much loss you have experienced how much pain you have experienced remember it and then you say what it made me feel and remember those feelings of pain embarrassment shame of ridicule whatever you have experienced experience those feeling and then you pray for him and make this prayer saying lord now i choose to forgive this person for he has done this to me and now i thank you for forgiving helping me to forgive that person and now i pray for him and so the prayer goes this way lord i choose to forgive name that person for what he has done so you recall whatever he or she has done and what it made me feel also recall the feelings truly experience them then you say lord now i choose 
to forgive and let this bitterness go away from me. And then you thank the Lord for, for allowing, to, allowing you to forgive him. Thank you, Lord, for taking this bitterness, this anger from my life. Now I pray for him or her. So let this be prayer said once, said twice, as many times as possible till your pain has gone away, till you are negative emotions have gone away and then you would find yourself free. I recall those people who give freedom, they have found, as I said, they get greater freedom, they are much healthier and happier. A woman who was uh, married in love, they were, uh, they were college friends and they, they were in love. And now this man went to, uh, went abroad in UK and there he uh, befriended somebody and they were relating. This woman who was in India was going to pains, sufferings. She used to get swollen legs, a sort of arthritis, could not walk. Pains were coming to her and she couldn't understand doctors after doctors. But this pain was something that was related to unforgiveness she had not given to her husband. After some years, they came back to, uh, to Hira. He sort of uh, realized his mistake. He came back to her and that was a difference. She accepted him and she could feel much better afterwards. I know of another person who is to retain water at, at his stomach because his business partner had done he had done injustice, he had cheated him quite a lot and he uh, incurred loss into his business. And so he came for an NLP program once and during this program workshop, he uh, sort of forgiven that person. He said, this person has troubled me many, many years back and still he's troubling me. I recall and I have such a pain, I'll forgive him. The moment he did this, his water started draining was started moving. And so our illnesses, our health is related to the forgiveness that we have give. The more we forgive, the better persons we can become. There was the story about Paulus. Paulus was a slave during earlier time, a Roman slave. And his boss was one of the commander, uh, Proclus. And this Proculus was the one who was uh, given him, Paulus, to guard his house. And when he was guarding his house, they have to buy more slaves. And so Proculus uh, took Paulus to buy more slaves. And when they were buying the slaves, suddenly um, Paulus saw one old man, a man who could not do anything. And then he told Proculus, Proc uh, sir, we should buy this man. And they bought this man. They bought this man, but Proclus was not happy because he was too old, he won't be able to do any work. And so he told him, we should not buy. But Paulus was insisting, I know, he is the one that is needed for our household. And he brought him and then he kept him in his house. But complaints went to the Proclus saying that this man is simply sitting and sleeping. He's doing nothing. Whereas Paulus comes and does all his work. He feeds him well and treats him too good. And so Proclus susp was suspicious and so called Paulus, tell me, who is he? Is he related to you in any sense? Is he somebody or close to you? And Paulus was denying, Paulus was denying. And then Proclus was very insisting. He said, he must be your father. You tell me the truth, I will not do anything. Is he your father? And Paulus at that time told him, no, he is not my father, but he is somebody more than my father. More than your father means what? No, he is the one who has killed my father, who has killed my brother. He is the one who has sold my other siblings and my uh, relatives to slavery. He is the one who has sold all my properties. He is the one who destroyed all of my family. And Proclus was surprised that you could forgive him. How could you treat him that way with such love? And that time Paulus, uh, Paulus said, I am a Christian and I am being told to forgive. And if I forgive more and more, the Lord would accept me. As the Lord forgive, I forgive. And so, my dear friends, let us have this freedom which we get out of forgiving. The more unforgiving we are, the more uh, prisoners we become. The more unforgiving we are, the more punishment we give ourselves. It's humanly not possible. 
it is very difficult for us to forgive but it's something that would give us greater freedom that would give us release of life that would bring us much more efficiency better interpersonal relationships better uh, better life as such as as a whole and we would be more free and so let us those people who give giveness forgiving before apology comes before any condition comes we give it out of our free will unconditionally and out of love mm -hmm.